Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on two-way tables. What we'll learn is how to construct a two-way table and how to interpret relative frequencies. Our real-world link deals with student-athletes. The data from a survey of 440 student-athletes are shown in the table. The students were asked whether or not they were on the honor roll and whether or not they played a sport. <coughs> Question 1. Complete the Venn diagram to represent the data. We had students' athlete survey on the honor roll was 115. <coughs> Only play a sport was 45. And then play a sport and are on the honor roll was 250. Relative frequency is the ratio of a subtotal to the value of the total. What is the relative frequency of a student that is on the honor roll and plays a sport to all students on the honor roll? Well, our total, 115 plus 250 plus 45, is 365. And the student that's on an honor roll and plays a sport was... 250. So our relative frequency can be written 250 over the total 365. Is there evidence that students that play sports are also on the honor roll? Well, we could say for this, yes, there is. 250 out of 365, if we were to write this as a percentage, is about 68%. And so this indicates that more than half of all students on the honor roll also play a sport. Construct a two-way table. A two-way table shows data from one sample group as it relates to two different categories. The same information from the Venn diagram on the previous page is shown below as a two-way table, where one category is represented by rows and one category is represented by columns. The two categories in the table shown are play a sport, so we have the play a sport or do not play a sport, and on the honor roll, where we have on the honor roll and not on the honor roll. And you can see as the numbers are filled in how these break down. So as we look at our first guided example, Philippe surveyed students at his school. He found that 78 students own a cell phone and 57 of those own an MP3 player. There are 13 students that do not own a cell phone but own an MP3 player. Nine students do not own either device. Construct a two-way table summarizing the data. Step one, create a table using the two categories. Cell phones are here and MP3 players are here. Fill in the table with the given values. So as we look to piece this together, we know that 78 students own a cell phone. So a total of cell phone is 78. 57 of those own an MP3 player. So 57 have a cell phone and an MP3 player. So that goes there. There are 13 students that do not own a cell phone, but own an MP3 player. So that's 13 students that do not own a cell phone that have an MP3 player. And then nine students do not own either device. So no cell phone, no MP3 player goes here. So that's the information we know. Use reasoning to complete the table. Remember, the totals are for each row and column. The column labeled total should have the same sum as the row labeled total. The first place I would look is here. I know there's 78 total. 57 are here. So 78 minus the 57 gets me this 21. Then, for the no cell phone, I know there's 13 and 9. So 13 plus 9 is 22. And now that I know this total here, 78 and 22, I add these to get this 100. 
I can do 57 plus 13 is 70. And then 70 plus 30 is also 100. So there's a lot of different ways you can piece this together. And the key is going to be for us to learn how we can piece it together. There are 150 children at summer camp and 71 signed up for swimming. There were a total of 62 children that signed up for canoeing and 28 of them also signed up for swimming. Construct a two-way table summarizing the data. Well, let's write in the numbers we're given. There were 150 students at the summer camp. So I would write that 150 in as the total here. 71 signed up for swimming. So a total of 71 signed up for swimming. Then 62 children signed up for canoeing. Well, that means a total of 62 signed up for canoeing, and that's right here. 28 of them also signed up for swimming. So that means 28 students signed up for canoeing and swimming. And then construct a two-way table summarizing the data. All right. Well, now we have everything we need, believe it or not, to piece this together. Let's just fill in one box at a time. For this box right here, this no canoeing with swimming box, we can take 71 minus 28, and that results in 43. So there were 43 students that were swimming that weren't canoeing. What about, let's go for this box here. We have 28 students that were swimming and canoeing, and a total of 62 that were canoeing. So if we take 62 minus 28, we can find out how many students weren't swimming. And that answer is 34. Next, we might as well get this box completed. There are a total of 150 students, or children. 62 of those are here, so we can take 150 minus the 62 is 88. So we have 88 students or children there. Now we can finish these last two boxes here. For that one, we can take the 88 minus the 43 to get 45. And then for our last box, we could either take 150 minus 71, or we could actually add here 34 plus 45 is equal to 79. So it does take some logic, it does take some piecing together, but kind of add, subtract, and work your way around the table to fill in all our numbers. Our second part of this lesson is interpret relative frequencies. A two-way table can show relative frequencies for rows or for columns rather than the actual values. By analyzing the relative frequencies in a two-way table, you can determine possible associations between the two variables. In guided example two, find and interpret the relative frequencies of students in the survey from example one by row. Well, what we're going to do then is to take the 57 out of 78, because we're doing this by row, and then the 21 out of 78, the 13 out of 22, and the 9 out of 22, and we get these decimals. Now, only the totals needed are shown in the table, and so we have 0 0.73, 0 0.59, 0 0.27, 41 hundredths, and obviously the totals there are going to be 1. And so, based on the relative frequency value of 73 hundredths in one of the cells, you can imply that most students that own a cell phone also own an MP3 player. The data also suggests that over half the students that do not own a cell phone will own an MP3 player. Do we got it? Find and interpret the relative frequencies of students in the survey by column. Round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Let's actually zoom in here so we can have a little bit more space to write on our screen. This is going to end up being then by column here, 57 over 70, 
13 over 70. And of course, 70 over 70 is just going to be 1. By column, this is 21 over 30 and 9 over 30. And as we get these into decimals, 57 out of 70 is about 0 0.81 or 81 hundredths. 13 out of 70 is 19 hundredths. And notice how 81 hundredths plus 19 hundredths is the 1. 21 out of 30 is about 70 hundredths. And 9 out of 30 is about 30 hundredths, which adds up to our, once again, 1. So as we try now to interpret this, we want to look for a relative frequency that's high or low, but let's look for the high one. And that's right here at 81 hundredths. So what we can say is that the relative frequency value of 0 0.81 or 81 hundredths in one of the cells strongly suggests that most students that own an MP3 player also own a cell phone. It's the conclusion we can make from these relative frequencies. We can look at the lower one here as well if you wanted and say, okay, well this is 19 hundredths, it's a low relative frequency, saying that, well, not many students who own an MP3 player don't own a cell phone. There are a lot of different ways to interpret the relative frequency, but if you look for the highest here, that might be the best way. And that is it for this lesson on two-way tables. Good luck.